Good afternoon from David Herman. It is 4.09 on April 11th, 2018, and this is Dave Herman, alias Daz, the artist in Olympia, Washington. All right. So a little bit frustrating to set up today, folks, but I got it set up. Here's my uh, Hornet. I'm going to introduce or do part two live. I've got my... Uh, reference on the second monitor to my right. So two monitors on ergonomic arms attached to the standing desk. On the desk is my Asus laptop. It's a 750 Gamer. I love that machine. I don't play games, but the power of the machine makes a super laptop with a 17-inch screen that's better than anything Apple and Microsoft put out as far as I'm concerned. Below that, on the floor is an old Nexus 7 beat-up tablet I've been using for four years. I've hooked that up to the uh, free music archive, fma.org, on the internet. Check it out. So, royalty-free music. Here we go. Let's uh, enlarge the Hornet a little bit today. Uh, chunk, chunk, dunk, like that. Uh, enlarging just kind of makes him disappear. Flying here, nice, giant! Okay, I'm going to go a little bigger so I can work on them uh, and the detail now that I did the rough. And just get it so that I can fit him in with my uh, pallets and stuff. Monkey around. There we go. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Pretty scary guy. Okay, let's just pick an area and start working it up. The fine detail. So, this body needs to be reshaped. And uh, let's find out what layer that's on. So we'll go to Eraser. And assuming I have something on this layer, not. Nah, let's go down to Inking Layer. And there we go. And then you can see my trace lines from Sketch Layer. I'm taking those out now. And this is why I use layers, because, see that? The background still stays. And then, let's see where that other line is. Let's sketch layer. So, curious. We are going to bump this up a little. Uh, Opacity-wise. So I'll make sure this eraser is doing its job. Let's see that line is still residual. So I'm going to go to background and see if for some reason that is in there. No. So ink layer. There we go. See that? It's the beauty of layers. I go over this all the time in my videos. How you can keep your background just exquisite without messing messing with it at all. Have these layers uh, set up, your sketch layer, your inking layer, your coloring layers, uh, and then trust that they're there because we're going to polish it up today and do some fine tuning. All right, that, that's good. So I want to reshape this uh, a little tighter. A little tighter. So let's do some of that. Let's get in here. And just uh, shape this up a little. So I'm going to be on. Uh, I'm going to go to layer three. I'm going to be in brush. And I'm going to call this fine tune layer. So just uh, layer properties, initial fine tune layer. Who knows what else I'll do. But sometimes I feel I've got too many layers, you know. <laughs> okay, here we go. You know, sometimes uh, it's like getting your coffee right, you know. you If you're like me, you kind of grind it yourself. Just it's cost effective and it tastes fresh. Not even buying it ground in the bag, I grind it, you know what I mean? I grind it. So I got myself... The typical uh, electric grinder, or I have a little crank mill by hand. 
where I grind it, just a few, put, just put enough in for the thing and grind it, and uh, turn it by hand, which is always fun. And then you get your milk, whatever you're using right, you, you know, you put that in your little espresso machine or uh, however you're making your coffee, it goes in your French press or whatever. While well, that's all percolating and stuff, you get that favorite milk of the day. Sometimes I use uh, hemp milk, sometimes coconut milk. Hemp's my favorite. Uh, whatever milk you got, and then your honey, and you get that all right. You pour it in there and you stir it up if you add spices, cinnamon, or stuff, depending on what you're doing to buy in coffee or whatever. And that's when everything goes haywire usually. So today, <laughs> In celebration of that, I was trying to set up my machine this complicated way, right? So I have my uh, Nexus Google playing in the background with uh, royalty-free music, which is super cool. I've got the, uh, that's on the floor, the little tablet, 4x7 tablet I've kept running over the last four years just by sheer tenacity and unloading everything, starting it all over again, all that good stuff. I don't really think of it for anything except music. I used to do email on it. That was a pain, so <laughs> always updating. Too many emails, too many websites, you name it. But it plays music great if you get it going. So that's on the floor, and it's playing royalty-free music. And that way, <clears throat> excuse me, it's separate from the microphone, that's recording this in my laptop. Because if the music is coming out of that microphone and the uh, my voice is being recorded, then they gotta be at the same volume having a conflict, see, but it's on a different device. I can raise or lower that music in the background. And uh, I'm self-taught at everything I do. <coughs> Excuse me, so, uh, you know, it's just one of those things you discover when you're doing it by yourself that, hey, I can do this. So, uh, the point I'm making is, when you get everything just right, that's when it usually goes haywire. That's when somebody sends you some jerk email <laughs> to aggravate you from your friends, or you inadvertently hear a click while you're doing one of these things, so you check the email, and it's an update, and you didn't want it to update, you inadvertently hit that, and now your machine's going into update mode, or you turn on Modavi to record, and Modavi says, well, you've been heard for the two millionth time, and here's an update that doesn't do anything, and so you do that, and then it moves all your icons all over, and you can't get them back, they're on a second screen, uh, you wanted them on one, you want them on your laptop, it moves to, imports over to a, uh, one of the monitors. <laughs> I mean, this is a forever challenge, and my hats off to all the artists like myself that continually try and figure out a way to do this. We're not the gizmo guys. We aren't hawking a product. We're not uh, uh, promoting anybody. We're just doing, trying to make the things that they sell us work. You know. We don't want it to just work under some little inky bink lab situation. We want it to work in reality, the way we use things. They never consult artists. There's a big thing where, you know, if you look at a review of any product, and I really want to study the reviews of something, say, a Microsoft Surface Pro or a Samsung Galaxy Notebook or a... Uh, Apple iPad Pro or the um, Wacom. I want to make an informed decision which is the best, which actually has the most portability, which actually has the least uh, trace problems, which draws when you want it to draw, where it should draw, and you can figure out the, where the cursor is. Uh, all those things. Well, every one of these products is not perfect. They all got their flaws. And so you're trying to figure that stuff out. And then you got to invest your money and try something, and then you, it doesn't work. So the point I'm making with this is 
why aren't the companies themselves paying a member of their staff to draw on the machine that they make? Why aren't they proving to us why it should work? Why aren't they showing us we have a flaw and here's the workaround? They would sell products. People would find them honest. Instead, they just launch the shit and you got to buy it and figure it out. And that kind of an error, uh, that kind of thinking that they have has soured me really to purchasing new stuff. When I bought my Asus, and this is kind of a promotion for those guys, my Asus uh, 750 Gamer 17 inch laptop about three years ago on credit and paid off over time. I was taking a big risk, but when I bought it, I went into the store and there wasn't an Apple computer, laptop, or a tower that anywhere compared to what was on that laptop. And you think of them as gamer machines. So I was just thinking, well, well, heck, if it's got that power, that's pretty cool. If it's got graphic cards, that's pretty cool. If it's got this and that, it must work awesome. I've never been disappointed with my Asus. I got nothing bad to say about it. The software upgrades from Microsoft, Windows, and everybody else, that just happens no matter what computer you buy. You can't get away from it. And they're relentless. And it's because of how complex the computer market really is. You gotta, it is amazing that they can bring us a machine that you can load trillions of apps on and do all kinds of magic with and art programs. But each manufacturer is forever upgrading their stuff. They get it to market, they make money. You know, it's getting seed money and all that stuff. It's like a never ending thing how companies run. Having been self-employed for 30 years, I kind of get the idea. So Asus out of the box has run perfect from the day I've got it. The only conflicts have been with people upgrading their software. And believe me, I write letters to everybody. I'm not a passive guy, as you know. I interact with the planet. I say my piece. And you have to do that. you got to do that, people. Be alive. Tell them what they should fix. They will fix it. That's the thing. They do, they do hear you. Sometimes it could take a month. It could take a year. But they hear you. They're getting a little more responsive to the masses. Now, to sort through all that, I have no idea how they sort through the infinity of say 100,000 emails a day or more or whatever they get because as a tattoo artist I get so much garbage every day it's unbelievable somebody wants a quote they're living in Europe they don't tell you that you can't figure it out from the email a lot of times because it's they trick you through servers and whatever so these giant companies they're up a lot against a lot besides the fact that everybody's trying to make them crash all the time figuring out a hole in a software to crash your stuff, your good stuff. All we want to do is draw, man. That's all we ever want to do as artists. We're just trying to draw, 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 draw. Trying to create. And so, I just want to say it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> that we can get anywhere and then when you try and figure out some of this more complicated stuff like I'm trying to do which is probably not complicated if uh, your degree is filmmaking and everything else but mine uh, was fine arts before there were computers <laughs> uh, however I am being an airbrush artist, using masking, being a guy that did everything on a light table before they had machines, we have a methodology to this. And so figuring out the tool to execute what I wanted to do was my biggest problem. And I'm still working on that. I don't even use one fiftieth the tools of these programs. And yet I'm still creating. That's the thing. Because 
until you find a situation that requires you to get, need a tool, you don't pull that tool out of the box. What's amazing to me is the forward thinking that somebody, somebody said, well, one day, you know, Daz or Frank or Sydney or one of these people, they're going to want this tool. See, they're going to be drawing and they're going to say, how do I anamorphically distort this? I'm tired of drawing things over from scratch. Is there a way I can just put handles on it all and move it around? And man, they had the forward thinking for that. And that's like freaky. It's like, well, what other tools are in there? Well, you're not going to know till you make mistakes. Then you're going to find a billion of them. So when you make a mistake, what I do, uh, when I make a mistake, and this is advice for when you make a mistake, is uh, I go to the internet and I type in, uh, well, I was trying to draw a circle and I hit this button, and this is what happened. And I do it over and over and over again until I get an answer. And then I get the answer, and I go, well, there is a workaround without starting over. Because starting over is the worst thing there is. In the beginning, you go, oh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to suffer through it. Because starting over, at the very least, the benefit of that is you get better at drawing. But... You don't want to get better every day you sit down here. Every day, you may just want to actually get a drawing done. So that's that's today's little rant the Maroonie. Uh, you know, what about it? <laughs> sup, homies? Sup? All right. Uh, we're fine-tuning this. We're just... Getting into our drawing here. The more you draw off a reference to the internet, the more you realize every one of these photos is retouched. Because you see sometimes they have the same situation you have. Uh, as you start to copy what you're visually seeing, you start to realize. Well, this person ran up against the same thing because now that I did this, that's actually what they did. I'm looking at. It's like, holy cow. Holy freaking caroni cow. All right. So, meanwhile, back at the ranch, some guys are dialing it in. And that's us. We're going to dial in a lot of stuff today. You just saw some cool work on the head. Uh... And now we're, we're working down here. So a lot of times you got to be thinking to yourself, what does the creature really do? Or if I'm drawing a car, what's really, what's really there? So this leg is folded, but there's a third part behind here. And you're thinking you're copying something, but no, you're copying not just a line the way you see it. You have to understand the product or you have to understand the insect or you have to understand your creature, you know, if it's a jaguar or whatever it is. So if this is uh, folded in flight, the two front legs are back, his jaws ready to bite, his other legs are in flight. And this is showing the residual, not residual, but it's showing you another hinge in the darkness. You can, uh, you know, make your artwork much cooler if you start to draw that hinged uh, shape a little bit. I think so. You know, the tarsus or the joints or... Uh, right now I can't think of all the names of an insect's leg. You know, the tarsus are at the end and then there's these little things here and then there's these hinges like kneecaps and stuff. And so... You don't want to just have a color there. You want the color to be uh, part of this thing, right? So this hinge is here, and this joint is here, let's say, or something. You know, you can allude to it, or you can be very precise. Now, this is going to shrink down a lot. So uh, it won't show up. But let's say I wanted to show the hinging here, like just a little bit, just a smidgen, you know, and, and things are not always as precise. They're more precise. They are, they get beat up, you know, if he's been in combat or something, they're not all going to be fresh. 
hinges and gadgets and things on his leg because they're like robots. I don't, I don't know how. For sure, makers do not look like human beings. They look like insects. Arthropods make up 80% of the creatures on the planet Earth. That's the insect world. The insect world is 50 times as brutal as the animal world. The cunning and the killing and the raw eating and the speed at which they act is incredible. The more you watch videos, the more you will be impressed. And I suggest, uh, like anything I get into, I like to watch the videos. So if you get a chance, watch some videos of uh, the animal, uh, the insect world, and you see that the hella layers would give me the ability to uh, find where the art is over the layer and take it out. You don't have to draw the background in again. I mean, think of that. It's freaking amazing. Okay. Freaking amazing. So now, like, this is residual stuff here. This doesn't belong here. Because I just now shaped the part. So I want to get that off, right? I'm not sure which layer I drew it on, but you just click through your layers. And you find it. Sweet, man. Super sweet. Got some wild music playing in the background, too. Hope this isn't overwhelming. But, uh... You know, and since I'm using a reference, if I looked at this on the internet, they're like blurry, they're in flight. So you can't be super, super nitpicky, detaily down to every hair. But you do want to show, like, if there's one joint here, if there's a second leg bone here, like if there's a third part here, if there's a fourth or fifth, you want to show some of that um, stuff. Just, oh, what do we got going here? Mini eraser. Just, uh, inking layer erased. Okay, no big deal. On to this layer. And so it, your drawing is a little more cerebral, by the way, than just uh, pencil along. You do have to retain some thoughts about your layers. And I'm not working super fast today, so excuse me on that. Today I'm thinking. I've got this strange music going. Do -do 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 -do. Do, 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 in the background and I want this at about 60-ish and this so my opacity generally when I'm working whatever I set it at I set flow at about a third of it you can try your own stuff and then uh, you know we're building some shadow work in here some articulated uh, surfaces Right? So it doesn't just look like a flat color. And then like a little bit of a highlight in the background. Now you know you see that joint that's hidden. And you can be crafty about that. You can get tiny and just put like a little a little line or something in there. Bring it out. Just like that. See, then a little, just a bump. Now you know this is folded and something's going on behind. Not that a guy just drew a line in you know, you're not just copying a line, you're copying a structure. There's the word I'm looking for. You're, you're pulling out a structure. You know, I'm not a great artist or anything, but just, uh, just throw my two cents in there. Don't be freaked out by my enthusiasm. I want to be inspiring. <laughs> I want people to feel what I feel as far as excitement, you know, art. It's so exciting. And don't expect to be a master overnight. None of us are. You know, I was an advertising exec first. I did 20 years in tattooing. Five years self-taught digital art and still teaching. Uh, I haven't made a dime with digital art. When I do, I will. But uh, 
right now. It's just informative, dialing in, monkeying around, do, using all my skills. See, here is 100% yellow. So you can't have any more yellow than that. <laughs> when you put down the yellow, it's 100% yellow. But you got this at 58%, so you're only using 58% of your 100. If you come down here like this and you hit some yellow, see that? That is intense as much as it gets. It can't get any more intense than 100, but you can fake it by, say, using gray is my favorite around any color or purple or something like that to create contrast. Another little trick. Okay, let's do a leg here because these are kind of just like blobbied up stuff. You know, I, you know, I was throwing lines in to get the beginning going, but here you can see some articulation, right? You see some stuff happening. Now up here should be a hinge too. Let's not get get too wonky. Not put that hinge in. So, because uh, they're not rubber, they got some kind of hinge gadget, you know, stuff going on here. If you tried to really make an insect. You'd be a god. <laughs> Never underestimate these things we call insects. This is the manifestation of the creature that is the creator in its real violent form. Don't misunderstand for a second that creator is spontaneous. Because the creator is spontaneous. It's... It could be sitting next, a praying mantis just sitting, look up praying mantis, they just sit there, something comes by, and then faster than the speed of light, that thing just snaps it in half. It, it was ridiculous how fast uh, an entity can move that weighs absolutely nothing, just has no mass almost. They're light as pins when you actually get to the creature, you know. And yet, with lightning precision and speed, it just grabs something by whatever part it's intending to grab. If it wants to yank your face off, there it is. It's got a grip on your face. And for one split second, you go, uh-oh, my face is coming off. And that's the last thing you remember. Because <laughs> your face comes off in the insect world. Not only that, the mama praying mantis, they are really vicious. When the male comes to, to mess with them, they grab the sucker. He knows he's going to die. And she bites off his freaking head. And he, his last intention was to have sex with the female. So he continues to do that after he's dead. <laughs> and she's already bit off his head and starts to eat the body of the male. And yet that's happening. So let's just see something here. Oh, we're in erasing mode. That's what's going on. So a lot of times we'll, I'll be yammering while I'm... Uh, drawing and uh, I'm getting into some serious detail in here and I want this to just have a zap of yellow right there so the head's attached to the body you know and there's actually something that comes out like a spine uh, a neck thing that's in here attaching this. So you might see that just a little residual bit of that in there. Just a, a touch, you know, put a little highlight on it or something. This stuff's in motion. So some it's not like completely an in, fo in focus, uh, you know what I mean? It's not like 100% in focus. But you want to show the, for sure the shape, the true shape of a thing. 
but you can have some type of blurry stuff or if I was really reflecting out the eye oh man it would be so so whacked out but so this there should be black under this part of the eye you know it doesn't reflect like right to the shield part of the face the goggles so kind of if you got that going on there actually this should be reshaped so I'm going to bring this around here yellow I'm going to black this reflection out and see how flat something looks once you take it out watch this becomes flat and then I put that reflection back in a little bit higher just a little bit higher it makes such a difference uh, to separate that and gloss it up a little and fuzz it just a little now that's cool and you might even have a touch so the B or whatever it was seeing let's say it's near a rock or something you would put that in here I can do that by faking it with some brown and you just know it's near something see without me having to define what it is so I could go like this and just see how that comes alive because you think you're seeing something like rocks or ground or where is he coming now if it was a bee and I put the bee in there that would be some uptight seriously coolness and I will do stuff like that eventually but uh, right now we're just working on a little bit of horizon rock stuff here see so you might see the ground this is you know where you think of reflections and spheres and stuff like that because the eye itself is a convex shape curved out towards us down here it's going to reflect below here it's going to reflect what it's facing here it's going to reflect this guy and so you can you can fake that in a reflection see like that that's just enough right there just enough lighter than the part under and if I wanted, I could do like a little bit more like that, okay? Now, I could put just a very, very faint artist touch of blue here, right? Because you might think, well, the sky is in the eye. Well, it could be. So, uh, instead, it might be just a touch right there, like in there. So take that little bit outside there because we want that to roll back. It'd be dense. And then, you know, if you feel that uh, this should be feathered, you can kind of take your black and, and work it, you know. Curve it if you want or break these rocks up. Or even have more black down here. So there. So now i got like what I think is kind of an interesting eye. I've got this clog on, the front mandible. Hang on one second, we're going to do a save. Oh, save as. And uh, <laughs> this is Hornet Monkey, but Hornet Monkey is now going to be uh, 003, just for the heck of it. And I'm save that to my desktop. Uh, boom. Chub boom. Right. Now I'm going to save a still frame of that. So I save as the same thing, Hornet Monkey 003, but as a JPEG. And save that on a desktop. Boom. Boom. Okay. So when you're saving the first, the PSD, that's all this. That's all your layers and stuff. When you save a JPEG, you're just saving the image that you see here. Okay. But now you're getting into hyper-reality and stuff. You know, and over the years... Excuse me, I'm going to put the music back on. The next few years, I'm going to really become good at this. Because it's my intention. And so, uh, let's just hit the music again. We'll pick another song. Oh, I think it's going to play. Let's see. We have liftoff. Let's see. 
There we go. It's kind of like some punk gangsta. I don't know what it is. The genre was. Uh, what did I pick? Let's see what kind of genre that is. Just out of it. I can't tell. Certainly isn't classical music, though. Let me tell you that. <laughs> Got some punk stuff. I like it. Okay. Now, back to the art. <sighs> Let's pick a, a back leg and the shaping of this armor now. Because armor's going a little bit too far. So, first thing I'm going to do is erase some armor. And I want to see where my eraser is. Right there. Okay. Sweet. So we're going to take some of this out. Remember, you can always go back. What am I doing there? I think I'm in black, right? Excuse me. Not liking what's happening there, so I just undo that. Watch. Edit. Step back. Somewhere I've touched something wrong, and we're going to fix that right now. Okay, that's good enough. <coughs> Pardon me. So, um, 96. Yeah, that's good. Alright, let me dial this in to shape this. I don't want this going like so. Yeah, I'm going to come under here. And so that's on like another layer. Maybe even in the sketch layer. No. It's not on the background, I don't think. Can I go up to the initial layer? Oh, yeah. So there we go. Hmm. Interesting. Let's get rid of that. And unfortunately, when you talk, a lot of times you can get lost in this. But that's okay. It teaches me. It teaches me more about what I do. So back on initial layer, I'm going to take that shape. A little bit in the orange category. I'm going to bring this down just gently. On top. I may have to go up another layer here. What do I have going on? That, that, that. Hmm. Something bizarre in this here. Oh, I'm in bright. <laughs> you gotta watch me yell out. You're in eraser, Daz. You're in eraser. Don't do it. Don't do it. You did it. You're in eraser. Don't do it, Daz. All right. Coming down gently. This armor. Want it to. Just get in there. Not quite hide the leg, okay? Sweet. Now I'm going to change the shape of that. Let me erase. I got to focus again. Mentally. Okay. Clean that up. Now it's a little less harsh of a turn here. So. Kind of rounds. Okay, we're showing some of the plate. Okay, like that. Pretty cool. Now. So the leg hangs down here and bends up. 
uh, and this is garbage what's going on down here <laughs> so let's uh, let's go to erase and erase some of this stuff take this out so See, we're making this more precise now. Got this nice front leg, got a cool looking eye, badass eye, antenna needs some work. Got these plates to do a little soft blending later. But now we're going to put this leg in, and then I'm going to, you know, that's going to wrap up today's uh, illustrating lesson, and I'm going to get into it serious off camera. But it's been fun, it's been real. Keeping it real, my brothers and sisters. Come on out to Olympia, Washington, uh, and get some ink from me. Show some love. Pretty good tattoo artist. Tatguy.com is the website. T-A-T-G-U-Y.com. And uh, let's see here now. I'm going to think how long I'm going to make this bend. I'm going to make this bend right about here. This is here. I'm doing this light so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Then it's going to get darker. And the body kind of attaches um, to this over here uh, this way. So we're doing that. We're going to do some brown and some weirdness in there. Yep, there's some stuff going on, some dark stuff. Okay, and this is supposed to be a leg. So even though it's not going to have a ton of detail, it's going to be a leg. So it's got to it's got to be like one of these j uh, joints up in here, and then this comes out here longer. So this could be a little bit longer, maybe. It's a little bit longer. But, so you know, it's it's an object. It's not just a shadow kind of thing, you know. And I'm articulating some of it, um, just enough. You know, it's in flight. So, but you want like it's. It's been captured. Say a moment in time is captured. We're still slowing down time enough to where we stop this flight for a second, right? And so, you know, I don't measure this stuff. It's not that accurate, my art. Uh, I'm just visually looking at something and trying to make it happen. But if it looks real enough, it's believable, especially when you scale this down. Now we. We've got this way magnified, okay? And this uh, is just, I can have it, it's longer because it's toward the viewer, but still it's just a little too long, frankly, but uh, it's okay. So you might have a little articulation here and some stuff, you know, so you know that's the, the joints and uh, some striations and stuff a little break up there you go so now this is bent more like a leg concealed up in here and I again I don't know what they call their legs but uh, let's just say leg okay got the leg leg meister yeah let's get down here and darken this up a little Hinges and stuff going on here. We don't know what's going on there, but there's something going on in here. You know? That looks cool. Now, even though these are bright yellow in the photo with these in the background, they're not as bright. So, uh, they're actually darker cinnamon kind of browns. Cinnamon browns. Yeah. There's a word for you. Okay, so let's, uh, let's kind of do some of that effect. 
went in here just kind of like that and some cinnamon browning this up here and then there's some stuff here and so this is just a little too long we'll cut that off there we'll get the eraser and we'll find out what layer this is on for cutting it off yeah see this is why you do layers though so. isn't that cool now let's save that uh, i want to save it as Hornet Monkey, number four. Um, uh, yes, I'm going to save it, the whole thing at that, just in case I forgot and crush this or something. It's nice to be able to go back to a point where you started. So you do that, and you save the still. So I have a couple more stills to post on my art station. And I do that. And then I'm going to cut this. Well, let's continue to draw. Let's make it an hour video. Okay. So I've got a second leg started. Let's start the third leg. This. And then what's cool is there's a you can see one from the other side, my reference. So uh, hmm. Let me think about this. Okay, I've thought enough. Uh, this is like a curve here, so we're going to come up here. We're going to erase you know, some of the stuff here. And then I'm going to go back to brush. Uh, royalty free music in the background they're doing their thing we're doing our thing and that's the way it is ah uh, you get to watch me make all my errors online live real time see how I fix them because I'm learning in front of you what I'm doing I am not telling you that I know everything about it tablet or this that the other thing I'm a man I mean these guys that I see doing these reviews getting back to the reviews they are not artists they go I'm a cartoon artist and then they draw some dribble it's like are you kidding me dude I I'm glad you're making your living off the internet and I'm jealous about that for sure they've figured out a way to build great YouTube channels uh, because that's nice, you know, they're, they're making some serious bread and they got good contacts and they get to try all the software and the new gadgets and stuff. But I'm seriously trying to develop a skill and a talent. And uh, it's going to take a little bit longer, for sure. Much longer. But he's starting to see how I subtly use layers, how I'm creating stuff that works. And... Uh, erasing things that don't belong, and so on. And if you watched part one, uh, you'll see how we got this far. And now today, we're fixing that out, right? So you see, you got like a imaginary. Let's see, I didn't undo that. For a minute. Took too much out. So remember, you can go back. So I don't want to take it too far. I just want to take a little bit out, like the zoe off the right layer. Go back to my background in there. And then uh, it says another leg hanging down. So you got to, they all hang down in different angles and stuff. And, uh, you know, it can be a little separation there curve that one, that puppy's coming up into here, this one's coming down into here, uh, so I might want to take just a little bit of skin off of there, alright, show that bend, 
and this is what you got to be thinking about not just that you're copying a line or a color you're copying a form there's something in there and it's telling you what you're looking at you know this is the leg of the insect so and then you know even though it's a certain color in the uh, uh, reference you may select your own color uh, better than the guy that retouched the, photo the photography and uh, make it look a little more interesting of course you have artistic license to do that build and now this is a different hinge like so this is kind of squared off maybe over here uh, get down kind of just yeah kind of come across there take a little bit out of that there this is in flight, so uh, some articulation and some dents and some things are blackness. Uh, you know, there's a shadow happening, let's say, at, at high speed or um, stuff like that. Yeah. A highlight, yes, indeed, a highlight up here. It's like a didgeridoo, huh? The background. And then I'm separate again this ridge from the one inside there. The darkness up here, maybe. So you get that sense that this is pulled out from what's behind it. And again, these are hand built. You could do all this stuff in these 3D programs where you just pull up insect and color it, you know. But we're building an insect. So pretty darn cool. All right, let's uh, let's remove some of this. This is way out too far, obviously. See with the eraser. So, and this is why I say some of these things can take 20, 30 hours, man. You're watching uh, just two hours. That's it. You know, I did the first hour, and I'm trying to talk and draw at the same time and everything. So, I get a little less done than if I'm drawing by myself. But this is practice for me to think it all out and in, uh, intently. Uh, and more and more and more of doing this while talking is a good idea because it's developing my sixth sense too, you know? Yeah. Alright, so this is here. This joint's here. Um, and then this I want to be up more. So, like I would erase this whole section. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You can always go back. Take that out, you know? And then I want to change the angle of that, see? So I want it to be like a little more like it's drifting. So we we'll drift it behind. Just pick a shade. Undo, be a brush on the right level, or even higher. There we go. And I'm in the wrong color now. Well, it's just frustrations. That's okay. Drifting out here. 
I'm just giving myself a little ghost image to work with. Okay. Then I can uh, define that a little more and erase a little more and so on. So I got one, two articulations. So I'm coming through here. Uh, I want to be a hingey this way and some stuff here. And I don't want that stuff underneath, so I'm going to erase. Okay, there's a good start there for developing these two legs a little later. <clears throat> Let's touch on the wing, and then I'm going to call it a wrap. So, what am I going to do with the wings? Right, they're in flight. You want to show motion. Where are they attached? How does it work? So, uh, this is uh, an entire length, but there's going to be some rapid movements and stuff. So, first thing is this kind of comes out of here we're going to we're going to give ourselves some lines to go by with uh, a gray okay so i'm looking at the top of this armor and the wing this stuff's yeah not exactly where it could be but let's see here so this on the top i'm going to go intense there there, it's a little black where I can really see this. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna go gray. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay. And uh, this is gonna come across here. So I'm just using that for reference. And then I'm gonna reshape this wing. coming down and this and then this is going to be some fuzzy stuff going on we're going to start to fuzz this out come across the body fuzz that out a little bit there fuzz this up and i want to be even less fuzz so this is all motion uh, yeah, stuff going on with wings in motion. And you see a little bit of the transparency of the body. And with highlights and stuff, we'll, we'll affect it. We'll uh, put a little grayness to this up here. And then a little highlight to here, maybe to the bodies in motion. So you know it's in between. Uh, and then you got to think of how all this stuff going on in a wing. Of course, it has a sacred geometry, uh, hexagonal structure, but you can't do that in flight. So I'm going to show a little more motion. Uh, there's a couple different wings, and. Just break this up a little. And this is way out here, all this stuff. I don't want that. So I'm going to get rid of that stuff. But I'm cool with it happening. Just going to get rid of it. There we go. See that? That's nice right there. Clean up this a little bit. Got a little bit of a dusty, rooty cleaning. There we go. Cleaning all the time. Cleaning. It's like insects. Yeah. Got that there. So then I would 
I would have, you know, uh, things would reflect into the wing uh, for sure. So they would be, uh, you know, there'd be some lightness maybe in the right layer. So we're here, we're here, we're here, we did there, we did there, we're going to be in brush. And then, uh, taking a horizontal swipe across, that's my reference, I'm going to kind of uh, feather that like this. So the bigger you open your brush, uh, the bigger the center area is, and that's what you're painting with. Okay, so I have a horizontal there, and then I kind of come here. Oh, that's perfect. I just like that. See, that shimmer just went. <laughs> Sometimes stuff happens right. Okay, when you get something you like, don't lose it. Save it right away. And that becomes, uh, we can still leave the, the PSD as 4 or 5. I don't care. It can be 4 and replace what's there. Because... Uh, nothing got wrecked in between. And when you save the illustration, or you're saving the illustration as uh, a 5. Remember, your PSD is just all these layers. It could be the initial one, the first one you start with. The reason I save a few different ones is because the major accident that happens is you wipe it out, and you don't have any copies. So, yes, you want copies. Uh, save as JPEG. JPEG monkey. There we go. So I may have identical fours and fives, but should I croak it, should it die, I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm good. So, okay, thanks for tuning in. I went past my one hour. I'm an hour and two minutes. And, uh...